So today's daily post, I am yours truly, Dr. Charles Nathan, and uh, this is Friday Fire. We are coming to you right from our studios here in Johnston, Rhode Island, United States of America. I want to welcome all of you. I see Austin is on, Godfrey, Alexander, Chris. I see all of you. I'm just kind of looking at the screen and seeing all of you and the wonderful things you guys are doing. I see Chantal, God bless you. My goodness. I want you to share this with as many people as possible. Let them know the doctor is in the house. I know um, we have uh, we have many people. We have Alexander watching. Sharon, all the way from India. Welcome on board. Welcome on board. And we have our wonderful Princess Reka. It's a wonderful day to be alive, and God is doing something good and new. We have Birgit. We have Joseph. God bless you. We have Alexander. And we have Henry. God bless you. We are talking about maximizing opportunities. That's what we are talking about. And I want to encourage you, whatever you've been going through, God has uh, a, an open door set before you that nobody can close. Nobody can close that. I see Anne. Hello, Anne. Welcome aboard. Love you. And Asia, welcome aboard. I see. Hey, we we we, we synced correctly today. That's wonderful. And um, we have, um, I want to say hello to everybody. Let me know where you're watching from. I want to recognize your city. And Mariama, God bless you. God bless you. I'm so glad to join me. Hey, Ning, it's good to see you. I am so excited. I see Pamela. 
God bless you. All of you that are watching me from around the globe, let me know where you're watching from. And I want to be able to acknowledge you and where you're watching from. I see Dr. Brian Rubin. And uh, we have Maryam, God bless you, from Pennsylvania, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I think in your area of Pennsylvania, it seems like the Bible is all over the place. You have probably New Jerusalem there, I don't know. <laughs> and we have Do, we have Derek on board. Love you, son. I'm so glad that you join us today. And we are talking about maximizing every opportunity we have. So I see Sandra again. God bless you. God bless you. I'm glad you joined me today. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I see all of you. I want to remind you that we have the upcoming conference. It is coming up from, I believe, um, the dates we put right on the screen for you to see. The dates of the conference is coming up very soon, next month, I think, from the 9th or so to the 11th, um, or 8th to 11th, I think so, of October. It's called a school of the spirit. You need to come and be part of something uncommon. We are going to be unveiling mysteries, mysteries about the supernatural realm, how you can understand the ways of the spirit. And that is what the conference is about, understanding how to operate in that dimension, in the dimension. And by the way, I told you we have something in the offing. And what is that? Our television um, network, we have about five weeks to get it running. And uh, we have most of the things in place. We had, I had a wonderful conversation today um, from the team that is helping us build this from Texas. And uh, they were so excited. And they told us we are right on track to produce probably one of the best television, television network globally. So we are excited about it. And we are glad that you're part of this. I want to thank you for joining us and for being part of this Uncommon Vision. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm looking forward to all of you being part of this. And so we are talking about maximizing opportunities. So I'm glad that you've joined me. I see uh, we have um, more of you joining me from different parts of the world. God bless you. Wherever you're joining from, I want you to get yourself ready. This is Friday Fire. This is Friday fire, so I pray you're ready. I'm going to read a scripture from 1 Corinthians 16, verse 9. The Bible says, there is a wide open door for a great work here, although many oppose me. Although many people oppose me. And that's one of the things you find out when you have opportunities, they are always going to be adversaries to the opportunity i realize in life things that have value they are always obstacle to getting it. it it's no surprise why we don't find diamonds right um above the surface of the earth you have to dig deeper there's an opposition you have to dig deeper into the earth, the earth's crust to pull out those diamonds to pull up those diamonds and opposition the same thing you don't find gold everywhere you go you have to dig deep you've got to go through the stubborn sod you've got to go through all of the things to find out the lilies of your life in all the words opportunities do not always come looking all rosy what might seem as an opportunity might be a trap you have to learn to discern opportunities Sometimes it seems like the worst moment to start a business is when there's a crisis, but that's really the best time because now opportunities are open before you. The Bible says, because a great door for effective work has opened to me and there are many who oppose me. That's the NIV version. I want to read another version for you. There is a wide open door for great work, although many oppose me. Now, I want to read from the uh, Berean version. It says, because a great door for effective work has opened to me. Then you have the literal translation that says, for a great and productive door has been opened to me. Has been opened to me. Let me tell you something. What you see as a crisis 
could be your best opportunity to step up. Maybe you've been fired from a job. Maybe you've lost a job. You've lost some opportunities, you know, or, or lost some job or some security. In life, there's nothing like security. What you think is security could be a trap. You've got to be looking for opportunities, discovering opportunities. That's what a lot of people don't know. See, sometimes you have to step up and do some things you've never done for you to have what you've never had. Are you hearing me? One of the other translation puts it this way. It says, there's a wide door for effective ministry. There's a wide door for effective ministry has been opened for me, yet many oppose me. One translation says, there is a wonderful opportunity for me to do some work here, but there are also many people who are against me. See, one thing I've learned in life is this. When I find out there are more opposition, it's a more it's a, it's a clue or a cue for me to press forward. When people are attacking you, brace yourself up, just sh get your shoulders up together, and then start running with the vision God has given you. Because you are about to enter your finest hour. You're about to experience things you've never experienced before, because I can tell you that God is really at work in you. I was talking about some of the things that comes as opposition. I say, oh, Lord, to God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> you've got to understand, you see, when I hear all the opposition, all the noise in the world, all the, I mean, if you look at the things around you, you might be in despair. You might be distressed. Maybe you just received uh, a, a bad report about a situation. I'm telling you, look for those open doors because the Bible declares, I have set before you open doors that no man can close. I have set before you open doors that no man can close. God has set before you an open door. The key is you've got to step through that door. But before you step through the door, you have to understand they are always going to be opposition to that dream. There's always going to be opposition to that dream. And I was saying to you yesterday, I said, you will find certain adversaries. And one of the adversaries you find is this. You find that your mindset, your mindset, your fixed mental attitude, what is your attitude to dealing with things that seem to come on you? Second Corinthians 4 verse 7. It said for verse 6 says, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. That God shines in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God that is in the face of Jesus Christ. Verse 7 says, For we having these treasures in jars of clay, earthen vessels, in a physical body, so the excellency of the power may be of God. There is, there is an excellent power at work in you. I want you to know that. There is something that's at work in you. God is at work in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasures. You know, one thing I don't want to do is, because most times, People want you to pray for them. Well, oh, please pray for me for this. Sometimes you don't need that. You just need a good biblical teaching on the word to build you up to destroy the enemy, to destroy the enemy. If we keep praying for you, we'll move those things out of the way. It'll be wonderful. But then what are you going to do when we're not there? You need to have a solid foundation on the word of God. Are you with me? The Bible says we are pressed on every side, but we are not in despair. In other words, we are being bombarded with all kinds of things, but we never give up. Do you give up? There is an effective door open to you. Squeeze through the door, push the opposition up, the opposition out of the way, and you will be getting into another dimension. I'm telling you, your mindset could be what is stopping you as an adversary. The second thing I mentioned is you can actually have what I call the environmental factor. Your environment can become uh, a stumbling block or it can become something that is always opposing you. 
You see, if you want to change what you produce, change the environment in which you're in. Let me talk a little bit about atmosphere and environment. You see, before something is created, the right atmosphere must be created. The right atmosphere must. Now, the question is, are you staying in that atmosphere or are you in a very toxic atmosphere? You have to know. Because if you are in a place of creativity, the right atmosphere, it will bring out the best out of you. Now, think about this. A fish, when you put it on land, it will look very useless. It will look very, very worthless to anybody except those that are going to eat it. But when you put that fish in water, you will discover its genius. You will discover the fish's genius. The same way, when I look at people and I see that they're not being productive or they're not living up to their best life, what God has put in them, the first thought that comes to my mind is it their mindset. The second thought is that the environment in which they're in, have you been conditioned by your environment to think that you cannot do something bigger and better and, and more productive than you're doing? So for you to maximize the moment, for you to maximize the opportunities, you've got to break the atmosphere, the environment in which you're in. Sometimes it requires what I call the law of place. Where you are determines what you produce. The environment you allow around you will determine what you produce. In other words, where you are determines who sees you. And who sees you determines who blesses you. Sometimes our biggest problem is we have been hanging around the wrong kind of environment, a toxic environment. You need to go to a place where it will bring out all of your brilliance that God has put in you. Do you know when you were born, you were loaded with the very best that God has. You were loaded with great things. The question is, have you made that discovery? Today is Friday's fire. I see Michelle, God bless you. I'm glad you joined me. I see Alfred, God bless you. And Yang, yeah, yeah, God bless you. I'm talking about there is something God has put on the inside of you that is so brilliant that the world has never seen. Maybe you've seen some examples in other people, but you, are, my friend, are a masterpiece. You are a masterpiece. You are one of a kind. There is nobody in the world like you. There is no one in the world that can compare to you. You were born for this generation, for this moment, to do uncommon things that God has set in motion for you to do. Are you with me? Are you with me? I want you to understand God is at work in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Are you, are you ready to keep hearing some of this? You were born for this moment. I see if he God bless you. See, you were called to do extraordinary things. You were called to do things that people had never seen before. Question is, are you ready to step up and seize that opportunity and seize the day and seize the moment? Carpe diem. Are you ready to step up and be the extraordinary person that you were born to be? This is your moment. I talked about that you can have unreasonable people. Unreasonable people, people that do not understand your assignment, that can become the adversary, they, they, uh, they can become the opposition. Like the Bible says, many opposed me. Many people opposed me. They are people that do not know who you are. You see, if people do not understand you, don't let them misunderstand and misrepresent and misconstrue all that you are. What am I saying? I'm saying to you, don't allow people's description of you become what defines you. You are made for something so amazing. The world has never seen your type. The world has never seen a, a, a unique person called you. And uh, why, why am I saying this? I'm telling you, once you begin to remove all of those things, just step away from unreasonable, 
unreasonable people. You don't have to answer every time uh, a dog is barking on your way home. Just keep driving. In other words, you do not have to respond every time somebody that is unreasonable is trying to question your integrity, your fidelity, is trying to question your, your motivation. Don't ever respond to those people. You've got to learn to seize your opportunities. I pray that this is helping you today. I pray that I see Jesse. Welcome on board. Hallelujah. I see Prittis on. Welcome on board, Sidney. Now, listen to me. I see Tino with you. Welcome on board. Listen to me. You have to understand that not everybody that you hang around with qualifies for the great things that you speak for the wonderful thing God has put in you. Do you realize that Jesus did not hang around the wrong crowd? He always understood who he was assigned to. What am I saying to you? There are certain people, certain enemies, unreasonable people, that you try to reason with them, they will not make sense. They will tell you everything. They always want to project to you their issues. If they have an issue in something, guess what will happen? They want to drag you into those issues or they want to project those issues to you. Stay away from those people. It's time for you not to negotiate or to, to um, put yourself in a place where you are operating less than the greatest you that God has purpose. Are you hearing me? You see, the world is hungry for something. Could it be what you carry? You know, most of us just allow the society to define roles for us. Oh, all the time, I, I hear people tell me things like, oh, you ought to be like this. I say to them, do you even know my assignment for you to tell me what I ought to be? Where were you when God found me, when Jesus gave birth to me by his own spirit and set me to go to the nations. Why are you gonna tell me what I'm supposed to do when you're not even doing what I'm doing? I mean, it's kind of, that's, I call that the height of arrogance. When they're not doing what you're doing, but they seat in a place to wanna advise you on how to get a result in what they have never done. Stay away from people that will belittle your dreams. Listen, it's a big thing, it's a tough thing to share a 16 by 20 idea with a two by four mind. Are you hearing me? It's a, it's a big deal because it would not fit in. So what do I say? Stay away from people that want to argue with you because while you're so busy arguing with them, you're missing that moment. You're missing the moment to act. You see, can I tell you something? Stop going around trying to explain yourself to people that are inconsequential to what you're called to do. They're not part of your assignment. They're not part of the help you're supposed to, to have to fulfill your assignment. Why are you so concerned about their opinions? In fact, you're trying so hard to win the curry, their favors or their opinions when in the long run, they don't even give that to you. I love what the Bible says about John the Baptist and what he said about Jesus. He says, John was a man sent from God. You've got to know where you come from. And the Bible says, Jesus, a man approved of God, sent of God, approved of God. You, my dear friends, have been sent by God, sent from God, and approved of God. Stay away from people that are unreasonable. Number four, I mentioned it could just be the friends that you keep. What am I saying to you? Some friends are not real friends. They are friends that when they see benefits, they want to keep you in the same state. They want to keep you in the same state. They don't want to see you. You see, one thing I say to people is, if your friends cannot see your future, they don't belong in your future, you just need to let them go. It's okay. It might hurt for a few days because of your emotions and things like that, but very soon you will create room for wonderful friends. Every time people leave you, celebrate, because God has opened up a new door for the right people that can, that can value what you carry to come to you. I hope this is helping you. Hallelujah. I hope this is helping somebody. You are made for big things. You are made for big things. Isn't that interesting how people will try to qualify you? They'll tell, oh, I don't think you, you're the right person. Oh, well, 
I might not be the right person for you, but I am the right person for my assignment. God cannot make a mistake. God did not make a mistake concerning me because he has approved of me. Do you know that God has approved of you? Hallelujah. So what am I saying? You've got to learn to, to discern the people that come around you. Not everybody that comes around you qualifies qualifies to be around you. Always know how to discern those people. So I'm going to give you, I told you we were sharing seven vital secrets. Seven vital secrets. And uh, how to maximize the moment. This is Friday fire. And I'm going to throw something. I'm going to make the pot sweeter for you. Okay, I'm going to do a little Q&A at the end of this. How many of you are ready for Q&A? If you're ready for Q&A, I want you to put an amen or I'm ready for it. Have your questions ready. When I open the gates, the door for opportunity for you to ask your questions, you're going to go for it. I'll take a limited number of questions today. I told you I was going to do something a little extra for you so you can be very happy with it. So I'm talking about seven vital secrets. Hallelujah. Seven vital secrets that you need to seize the, the day. Carpe diem. You will seize the day and you will move in another dimension. I'm going to go through those things again just to help recap it for you. Number one, do something. The opportunity. <clears throat> the opportunity to do something that is rewardable. To do something that is rewardable. Number two, to meet somebody that is remarkable. To meet remarkable people. When you have an opportunity to meet somebody remarkable, please don't have an ego issue that you allow your ego get on the way. So why do I have to meet him? You know, if he wants to come, let him come to me. Can you imagine that? <laughs> and some people are very funny. So, well, if he, if he really wants to come, he can come here. No, that attitude would always stop you from meeting amazing people. When I get an opportunity to meet someone remarkable, I seize that opportunity. I, I seize that day and I clear my schedule to be one moment around my mentor. Apostle Everton and I, once we came all the way to Tulsa, Oklahoma, we were having a miracle meeting somewhere in the Broken Arrow area of Oklahoma. And um, we, we, we decided, OK, we're going to take a day to come over and uh, visit um, Dr. T. L. Osmond. So when we came, the people in the office just ran to us and they were showing us all the libraries and showing us all the amazing things. What a glorious, what a joyous occasion to be around people that really believed in us and they said they made a statement you said do you know the ladies were telling me do you know um daddy really enjoys your preaching i was shocked dr taylor osborne angel he doesn't listen to me he said no he follows what you're doing i thought wow but i came to meet him i met him another time we have um, my, our dear friend mike francine was having a meeting in tulsa and all the great evangelists um the late reinhard bonke uh, late dr taylor osborne all the greats kenneth hagan jr everybody was there mike murdoch all the guys were there so it was a, a small place with just some of the key people we were talking about the strategies for global evangelism how to set up miracle crusades and things so Dr. Taylor Os Osborne was, he was one of the speakers there. Brian Bunk was one of the speakers The Mike was one of the speakers because he was the host. At that time, we had done some great work. God has used us to do great work in, in Denmark. At the time, I mean, we had just come back from some of the meetings. When in four days, we had over 15,523 people that gave their hearts to Jesus. In four days in Denmark, in Copenhagen, at the the uh, Pensakirken, the, the Pentecostal church in, um, in Nur I, think, I think they call it Nuremberg, you know, that area of, of Copenhagen. It was wonderful. What was amazing about those meetings was the line of people lined up in the winter time, several blocks, about eight or nine city blocks waiting in the winter to come to the meeting. Now, and I could say, well, you know, these are my meetings. People are coming in here. I mean, 
The meeting would open at five o'clock for a seven o'clock meeting. At 5.15, the whole building, the whole auditorium is filled. The overflow was filled. And so they come to hear this, this little preacher from Africa, well, from the United States, actually from heaven. Let's get it straight. Okay. And now, <laughs> so they came and great things were happening. So all around the world, people were talking about the revival happening in Denmark. And here I was in Tulsa, everybody, all, I mean, Egon Falk, my friend in Tanzania, Egon, Egon said to me, say, Charles, what God is doing with you in Denmark is phenomenal. Now, I hear all those things, but I wasn't there to be told how great a job I was doing. I came there to learn because in that group were remarkable people. I was willing, my team, we were willing to pay whatever expense it was to meet the remarkable people. So when Dr. T.L. Osmond was coming, it was amazing. <laughs> wow, Michelle, you went with my friend Saint to Honduras. That's beautiful. Now, here was T.L. Osmond. He's coming. And I just said, oh, daddy, I'm so glad you're here. I said, thank you so much. And he said, oh, Charles, I heard what's happening in Denmark. God is doing such mighty works with you in Denmark. And he was praising me. And he was, he was talking about, he wanted me to tell him more. He wanted me to tell him more. But you know what? That would have been uh, stupidity of me to tell him what I've done. Because he has done more than I've done. I recognize I was around greatness. That was my father. And what did I do? Immediately I said, oh, dad, I, I think I, I, God is doing great things in Denmark. Praise God. But I am here to ask you, how can I get better? What can I do to be more effective in what I'm doing? I had my questions that had practiced over and over. And he said, oh, just do what you're doing. You're doing it right. I said, is there anything I can change? Is there something you think I can do to make more of an impact? When you are around remarkable people, be able to discern your moment. Seize the opportunity to ask the right kind of questions. But a lot of people, they, they, you know, a lot of people, I know Michelle is talking about the three jets. That's, those are the kind of crazy friends I have. You know, <laughs> Mike Francine took three jets, filled it with preachers, arrived in Honduras, shook up the nation. I, I love those kind of guys. And by the way, we have the school of the supernatural coming up next month. It is going to be wild. You need to register. Go to psom.org. You want to register. It's going to be wild. It's going to be wild. So you want to register. So I was asking questions. Why? Because it will be stupidity to miss that opportunity to ask him how he has done things. Because one moment around remarkable people can change the world. I talked about that yesterday. I said, you can become a person that does remarkable things. Hallelujah. Meet somebody remarkable. One contact with them can change the world. And that was what happened in the, in the, the, the Bible. A woman met Jesus and her life was forever changed. Her life was forever changed. Number three. The opportunity to give something blessable. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall people bring to your bosom. Look for opportunity to give something blessable. I remember once, um, we, we, when we moved from Connecticut and we came to, uh, to Rhode Island, you know, so... Um, because Donna and the whole team, you know, we were staying in the place and we had two cars. We had, I think we had three cars or two at that time. And uh, we just came from Connecticut, staying in uh, somewhere in uh, Providence, Rhode Island. And it was not the best kind of neighborhood to stay because we just needed to make that move. God told us to move. We had to move. And um, we left everything that people considered a big blessing just to obey God. When we came to that place, our next door neighbors, they were not even Christians. They were not even Christians. But guess what? The Lord told us, give away two of your cars to your neighbors. It sounded like something crazy. It sounded like something crazy. But do you know what I did? I obeyed. And I went to our neighbors. They looked at us kind of a little fishy. Like, why are you doing that? We just 
handed that to them. And do you know what happened? I was on my way to Sweden. When I got to Sweden, my auntie, she, just, she didn't know what I had done, but she decided, God spoke to her while we were in the car. He said, uh, man of God, God said, I should give you this brand new car. I just smiled. I said, hallelujah. <laughs> you see, nothing leaves heaven until something leaves your hands. When she, she, she did that, and it was marvelous. We went to the place called Arkin and had a glorious meeting and then the pastor at the end of the service says um man of god i have some i have to tell you something somebody brought a gift for you i said oh what is it i know <laughs> i'm always excited when you talk about gifts you know i said what is it he said um he gave you a hardly a hardly davidson motorcycle i was like my goodness, I, I put on my leather jacket. I need to get on that hug and ride that hug. I'm telling you, I was so excited, but I can take it across the, across the ocean. I decided to sow it to the pastor. Hallelujah. You see, do something blessable. And when we came before we knew it, God blessed us with another beautiful vehicle called the Yukon Denali, the same one the president normally would use. I know the, the call, the call, the, I mean, those are, those are the big, SUVs and we got blessed with one and that's what I'm talking about do something blessable when you do that God begins to do supernatural thing in your life hallelujah nothing leaves heaven until something leaves your hands you see the Bible says this it says whatever good you do for somebody else God is able to do that back to you it did not say the person will do it for you. God himself would get involved. You see, whatever you make happen for somebody else, God himself will make it happen for you. Look for something that you can give that would be blessable to some, somebody. During the last power school, God spoke to me to give away one of the cars we have, um, this uh, beautiful uh, Range Rover, and uh, I, I, I released that seed. But you know what? I did it gladly because God has given us the amazing opportunity to become blessers of people. He said, we're blessing, I will bless you and shall be a blessing to others. Now, I had a need for a vehicle, but I released that. Why did I do that? Because I know that when I do something that is a blessable, God will always respond to me. Hallelujah. Do you understand that? Number four, the opportunity to hear a message or to read a remarkable book. I'm talking about how you can seize the moment, how to access ways to opportunity, reading a book or hearing a message. You're listening to me today and something amazing is happening. I see Lucienne, God bless you. And hello, Raphael, love you. That's my little baby there. <laughs> oh my goodness, hallelujah. It's exciting. It's exciting. Hear this. When you want to be better, information would always bring transformation. Information would always bring transformation. A lot of times when I'm talking to people and the first thing they do is they don't want to read. They just want to hang out. I said, no, no, no. You see, look for an opportunity to read something remarkable to listen to a message make an investment you see make an investment first in yourself so that others can now make a withdrawal from your life that's the key you've got to become a person that understands the principles of how to increase in what you know what am i saying you cannot be transformed except your mind has been renewed for your mind to be renewed you have to have new kind of information i pray that this is helping somebody today. You see, sometimes people say, I'm going to fast for change. I'm going to pray for change. You don't fast and pray. If you want change, new information will bring change. Invest in books. At certain times, I buy over 50 books. One time, I went with one of my daughter. We bought 300 books at one time. I have a collection of over 50,000 books in my library. And I'm still building it. And then I have on my iPad, on my phone, I have over a thousand books in there because I don't want to stay ignorant. I want to learn. I need information that will bring transformation. But I 
look for something remarkable to learn. I just don't read everything that I see. Time is the currency of life. I have to maximize my time so that I can read things that can give me an advantage in living. I want to learn every day. I want to add to something I have so that every day I make life a transformative day. Are you, are you with me today? Hallelujah. So that's what I'm talking about. And Linda, I said Linda, it says leaders are readers. Remember that all the time. If you're going to be a leader, you've got to be a reader. What am I saying? A new book is an opportunity to explore, to go into the mind of the writer, to discover. See, one way you can be mentored is either you're reading books or listening to CDs or DVDs, whatever it is. You can, you can learn and get information every day. Just be willing to learn. When I get up in the morning, I spend about two hours taking in new information. I don't want to start my day with the same information I had yesterday. I seize the opportunity to get into learning something new or watching something new. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And Michelle, get ready. God is going to do something extraordinary with you. I see my wonderful pastor, Pastor Timo. Welcome on board. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Are you with me? Learn. I want you to look for an opportunity to hear a message, learn something, or read something new and something wonderful. Number five, the opportunity to work in a strategic place. You see, sometimes it's not about the paycheck. Some people, when you come into an environment, some of them are looking for, how much are you going to pay me? Sometimes it's not about the pay. It's about the strategic positioning that you're in that place and you will have relationship and experience that far outweighs how much you're paid. Look for the opportunity to work in places. Can I tell you? I have, I mean, if you ask, I have my pastor, your pastor team. I, I told you, he will tell you. Those days when we're in the university, uh, back in, in Nigeria, when they said, who would, who wants to help with the arrangement of seat? I always volunteered. Who would do this? I, I didn't know how to. I just volunteered. I just showed up to work and be around the brethren that I was learning from. Every moment I, I find an opportunity to serve, I served. It wasn't about whether I was getting anything. It was about whether I was being taught something, working in a strategic place. I want to work in a strategic place because when you work in a strategic place, there are opportunities that come your way, exposures that come your way. You begin to learn things that those that are, that are looking for a paycheck would never learn. Do you know the reason why you, you work in a place? Number one, you work for relationship because, you see, if you're working in my office, you can invite me to places. But if you don't work in my office, you will never have that relationship to invite me to your parties or to certain things. Um, I mean, Jeff Bezos of Amazon will not come to your party if you don't have a relationship with him. You might not make as much money as he does, but because you work close to him in that strategic atmosphere, he gets to know you. And when you say, oh, I have a, I have a wedding, I'll really be honored for you to come. He will show up in your wedding and you see the, the richest man in the world will come to your wedding. I said, he's the richest man until I show up. Hallelujah. <laughs> you understand how we roll with this. Now, hear this. You have to understand. I say, Pastor Tim says, correct. I, I learned so much. Those days, I would, I would go to, we, we would just hang out with the brethren just to learn something new and just to work in a place. I mean, most times in ministry, it's sometimes not okay. I need a paycheck. It's just being in the right environment where you're taught. And so the first reason is for a relationship. You, you have a relationship with people. The second reason is this. You have, to, you have to work for experience. Somebody say to me, I want to travel the world. I said, do you have a passport? They joined the ministry. And when they joined us, within six months, they have been to three countries. They were shocked. All their lives, they never left the United States, but under three months of being with us, they were in six, uh, 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 six months, they were in three countries. That's what I'm talking about. You get experience. You know how the world works out there. And that's what I'm talking about. Once you connect in the right environment, something remarkable 
begins to happen. You are exposed to greater things. Your thinking changes and you begin to roll in a different dimension. Number five. I, I hope you're with me. Number five is to walk in a strategic place. Number six is to visit a place that is noticeable. That is notable. How to visit a notable place. I remember when we were we had a miracle crusade in Paris, France. So myself, the Princess Reka, and the team, we decided to go to the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower, beautiful place, learning the history, that iconic tower we were there. The same thing when we're in London, we went to the Towers of London. Every time we go to places, we want to learn what the history is, why that place is iconic. We've been to so many places and we learn the impact of that moment. Travel, expose yourself. It's a beautiful world out there. You know, when somebody gives you an opportunity to travel, please seize that opportunity. Don't try to say, well, you know, I just want to stay here. No, 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 no. Go to a place remarkable, some place notable, some place that will help enlarge your vision. Our biggest problem is this. We're not exposed to a lot of things. And so we call it uh, having a coconut head or co coconut lifestyle. You know, everything is inside a coconut, but it, it, it has a hard shell. No one cracks it. You have to crack it to get into what's inside because it feels a whole world is a, it's called a coconut world. You don't want to have that kind of mentality. Visit places. See, life is not about collecting things. It's about experiencing things, experiencing moments. You see, when you go to a place, it changes you, it stays with you. If you buy stuff, it can break, but have memories, create memories by going to places that are notable, that are notable. You can learn very quickly while you're there. I, when we go to places, I want to I wanna take time out. We went to Bolivia. I'm learning about Bolivia. When we went to Potosi in Bolivia, I was told what happened. So when I came to preach, I had information about what was needed to preach, and God did mighty thing in that place. And number seven, I hope this is helping you. And I see Hilma is saying, <laughs> and uh, Princess Rika says she climbed, she climbed uh, the Eiffel Tower in, in high heels. Well, I, you know, I, I want to say to the ladies, I applaud you because I really applaud you because guys. We take heels. If we hit those heels, we can't take a step of falling forward. I don't know how you do it. And I said, women can't even run on heels. My goodness. I, I, I congratulate you. In Iceland, we visited Iceland. We went to, to the, 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 the hot springs and all those things. It was beautiful. We had an experience, an experience there. Visit places that are notable. Number seven, the opportunity to rule and to, to, to lead and to coordinate people or to be in charge of something. It's an opportunity. It's not a right because you can be replaced any moment. Do you ever wonder people that died, the world did not stop because they died. They were redundant. The moment you stop being grateful for where you are, guess what happens? Somebody's going to replace you. Everybody's replaceable. I am replaceable. That means God is more interested in his purpose fulfilled than my simple trying to do something. No, see, I am taking every advantage of the opportunity to lead, to talk to you, to come to you, to lead people to Jesus, to lead people to victory, to teach them how to, to become successful in life. I look at that as a privilege, as an opportunity to do something remarkable in their life. I never want to take for granted that I, you, you come to listen to me. It's a great honor to, li to have you listen to me. Every time I, I have this opportunity to talk to you, I, I, I begin to get myself in that position. I have to give you my very best. I don't want to give you mediocrity. I don't want to give you something smaller than what you deserve. I want to give you my very best whenever I come here. I want to give you not just my wisdom. I want to give you my life if it's possible infuse it into you and when i see you winning i know my job is done that's what i like hallelujah you see you have to 
you have to you have to understand that you're made for great things you're made for wonderful things you you never want to be in a place like nebuchadnezzar that that he felt it it was his right to be king and uh, he ended up being an animal for for a few a few moments no never take things for granted you see the life that god has given us is beautiful it's wonderful and we get to lead others into this wonderful glorious destiny that god has put into in, inside of them don't take it for granted when you're given a place of responsibility take it with grace and be measured in your approach in other words it is an opportunity it is an opportunity god would have picked anybody but god chose you for the mission god chose you for the mission he said who will go you said lord here am i send me and you became his choice you see we are his choice because we chose to say yes we chose to say yes no one gets promoted or rewarded or comes to greatness without volunteering for that position and never take that position for granted because one day somebody might replace you if you're not working yourself out of where you are this is what i say about leadership how do i handle leadership i tell my guys the day you start doing a task if i tell you you're in charge of the men's ministry if i tell you you're in charge of the business the day you assume that office you have the you have the greatest opportunity to lead others and walk yourself out of that position don't make it a permanent thing it's, it's not a permanent city in the united nations walk yourself out of your position train others under you it is an opportunity to invest in others and to lead people in triumph that's what i'm talking about never you take for granted the opportunities given you to become involved in something bigger hallelujah are you with me are you with me i hope you are you following me and i told you guys we have our television network coming it is going to be glorious it's going to be glorious i told you we had a great meeting today with the team in texas helping us set up this wonderful television we're going to be in roku we're going to be also in uh, amazon fire tv and uh, they, today they were offering us other things they were offering us uh, <laughs> some more things for us to be on the apple tv and uh, it's wonderful so every day we're getting all kinds of offers coming to us it is glorious i love it i love it i love it so it's gonna be great so you get to hear the good news all the time you see you might be listening to other people but you, you chose to listen to us today we never take that for granted and uh, we're going to do a bit of q and a um shortly and uh i want you if you have any questions we want to do i hope this has helped you today seven keys seven opportunities seven ways access ways to opportunities i've stated that do something rewardable do some meet people that are remarkable so something that's blessable hear something that inspires you and uh, work in a strategic place take opportunity to work in a in a, in a strategic place and to visit a notable place and the last thing is to lead to take charge to coordinate people and to be in charge of a place it is the greatest opportunity and honor that you can ever have for god to say you lead my people i take nothing for granted i am so thankful to god for the privilege of being part of this hallelujah so before we do q a i want to do a quick segment today as friday fire and is partnership friday is partnership friday and uh, what does that mean your partnership helps us go go around the world right now we need to actually raise one million dollars to get the gospel to every nation we are planning things we just got some information we have to go to kenya to open up uh, one of the new churches that our daughter has just built we have to be there we have to be in tanzania we i just spoke with um i'll call his name alfio that is handling some of our, our radio and uh set up in east africa and he was just talking to us this morning telling us all the things happening i told him we're going to make sure that works the gospel must be preached the gospel the bible says necessity has been laid upon us woe is me if i don't preach the gospel because necessity this is necessary we live in the world people are panicking 
they need some peace they need some love they need something new and fresh we can do that without the help of people that share this vision i want to encourage you what we're going to do before we start the q a i want you to do something i want you to sow something in common today for those that so we're going to send you a gift a special gift we're going to send you one of our great teachings it will be a tremendous blessing to you as a thank you for doing this i mean some of you if you can sow a thousand please feel free if you can sow a hundred thousand please feel free to do that ten thousand we need all the help today to get the gospel out we need all the help if you can give us the million we'll be very grateful that way we can go ahead and get this thing done because you see the gospel is free but it takes money to get this thing out it takes money to get on television and we now we are building our own television network to get our message out if it's what listening is what sharing if it's blessed you it definitely will bless some other people so we want to make sure the whole world hear this gospel until the whole world knows there is good news available we will not stop but that's where your partnership comes in hallelujah so it is uh, i love name it says it is a collective mission and a vision this is not about us it's about the kingdom of god advancing so what we're going to do we're going to give you a great opportunity today you want to go to christlove.org you want to click on that there's a forward slash donate you will see that button you can click and you can sow your seeds today's partnership friday you can sow your seeds there and then the second thing is you can go to uh, paypal.me and then forward slash charles and different c-h-a-r-l-e-s n-d-i-f-o-n my last name and you can sow a seat today if you have a problem inbox us we'll make sure we can work that out for you some of you that are doing the paypal option you, you normally send that to the phone number don't do that send it to the email info at christlove.org that's what you do if you're sending it on paypal sometimes you want to know the 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 the, the, the e email is info at christlove dot org so that will help you know how to do that and then we have other options we have the cash app you can you can send something the cash app uh, i hope they can put that up there hallelujah it's there for you and uh, we can make sure we can get those those things is the dollar sign charles in the phone it's about the gospel it's about getting the gospel out to people i just got a wonderful e um, uh, text message I ministered to somebody yesterday and uh, he was losing his vision. And today, just as we're going out to Tiverton um, in Rhode Island, we ministered to another person losing his vision. And God is restoring people. He's restoring vision. Right now, I feel that God is healing people. The tumors you have is being healed in the name of Jesus. It's being healed completely. I see somebody also with a heart murmur, it's a, an arrhythmia. God is healing that. There's a heart murmur. God is healing you right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody with a ringing in the ear, that ringing is disappearing. Actually, that ringing started from a loud sound that you, you, you had. I don't know what you were doing. Were you in the military or maybe working in construction? And that ringing has been bothering you. God is healing you right now in the name of Jesus. I see somebody with a breathing condition. You're being healed in the name of Jesus. Your lungs are opening up right now in the name of Jesus. You're being healed completely. I see somebody with a back back condition is being healed. You have a slip disc. God is healing you right now completely. Just move your back. You find the pain is gone. And the person that was losing a vision because if you're, you're losing a vision because of a tumor, that tumor is dead from its roots. You begin to see light coming in and see things are clearing up now in that vision in the name of jesus you get yourself ready god is healing you right now hallelujah hallelujah i see somebody you have a hip condition god is healing you completely another person you're carrying such a burden because of things that people have done against you they opposed you they they harassed you the things that belong to you they didn't give it to you and you've been fighting god is saying to you today forgive those people because god is about to release unusual favor and unusual blessing the, he's about to bless you so much they cannot resist what god is doing in your life so you get yourself ready get your heart free from all of that weight and of, of that pain you've been going through because god is setting you free right now and for those of you uh, let's finish up make sure that everybody has an option or an opportunity to sow a seed you can go also um you can write a check to christ love media 
because this is the media ministry. You can write uh, Christ Love Media and you can sow a seed there and something amazing will happen. Do that today. See, your investment, you see, I like the opportunity to give something that is blessable. Do that today and we're going to help you. You know, just coming here today, I was talking to um, Solomon and I was telling him, I said, we really, there are a lot of hurting people right here in our community in Rhode Island. And I said to him, I said, I would like to have a house just for young ladies that have no place that are homeless. In America, there's homelessness. Maybe their parents do not value them, or maybe their parents are caught up in all kinds of things. We want to be able to love on those people and bring them to a place that is safe, and we can raise them as royalty and teach them, let them discover their supernatural identity. And do the same for the men. We can do that all by ourselves because this is our mission. We want to make those kind of places available to them because young people or even older ones don't have a place to stay and people are, are sleeping in cars or sleeping, they don't, they're being, being kicked out. Give them a place of safety. We want to do that. We can do that without people working with us. We can do that without you being part of that vision. And that's why when we tell you Daily, I, I I was telling Solomon also, I said, you know, he hurt me. I said, we have a package prepared for one of our, our men just to help him get his family in intact in so that they can go and fulfill the mission of the gospel. We don't want people to stop doing this. Satan is not taking a vacation. We need the people in the kingdom of God that can invest in the gospel. Let's get the message out. I mean, a million dollars will not be enough, but it's a good start. But let's get into that dimension that we begin to believe for big things and do big things. We want to do big things for God. Maybe you want to get, you want to sow a legacy seed. Let's do something extraordinary. I was talking to one of my daughters, and she was telling me there are a lot of orphans, you know, people that their, 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 their parents died in Africa, but then they're staying with their uncles or their aunties, and they're being treated as slaves because the parents are dead. The uncles and the aunties are not treated them very well. She said she wants to open a place where she can house them because she went through the same thing. And I said, what can I do to help? Every day there is, is an opportunity to do something. There's an opportunity to do something remarkable that can bring a blessing to people. If we can do that, let's get started. Let's not waste. Let's capture this moment. Let's seize the day capper day this is our moment we go straight and sow that seed whatever way you want to do it i want them to put those things again you go to christlove.org click the donate button or you can go to paypal and you have the cash app you use that option you can see all of those things up there let's do that today and let's believe god for something big and something wonderful are you ready let's do something extraordinary for jesus hallelujah that's what we are talking about today Let's not pull punches. You see, I realize this. If we're going to do something big, we've got to make a big investment. We've got to make a big, big investment. And we are on our way getting the television network. I can tell you in five weeks, watch out. You're going to be saying something amazing that we are building with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you, are you excited? Hallelujah. You want to be able to be a part of something greater than yourself. You're part of something great. And today is Friday Fire and Partnership Friday. I am so excited you've joined me. And um, those of you that are your tithes and your offering, you know, you know where to put that. It goes to where you're receiving your spiritual nourishment. Here, we want to, re you know our integrity. We want to be able to help you discover all that God has called you to be. I hope that this has helped you. So we're going to take a, a quick segment. We're going to, I want some questions and answers now. No, you want some answers? I need some questions. No. So let's do something big. If you can sow 5,000, 10,000, you know, no amount, no amount, whether it's a dollar, whatever it is, sow something and say, Lord, I want to give you my best. I need the mission of the kingdom going forward. This is what it's about. You know, sometimes people, when they talk around about finances, they get a little shy. I'm not one of them. I know what we can do when we have the right resources. We can bless people. We can actually bless people. We do that all the time. 
It, it hurts my heart when we come to places and I see people hurting because they've been rejected by families. I want to just adopt them. I want to take them and just <laughs> somebody say to me, um, you, you don't mind giving them your name? I don't mind give, if they if they want to have my name, fine with me. Fine with me. I love them. I want to see them. I'm, I mean, they, I know they have wonderful names. You know, we want to help people. It's about helping people. It's not taking uh, credit for those things. It's really helping people. Let us minister love that heals the people around us. That's what this is all about. Hallelujah. I hope I hope you got you got my whole, whole point about this. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Thank you for those of you that are doing some mighty things to invest in what we do. The gospel comes to you free, but it costs us money to get all the equipment. In the last couple of days, we damaged one of our equipment. It happens. We spend thousands of dollars buying something. You go through the airport, it gets damaged because there's scanners that do things. So that was why we didn't do daily bus one of the days. We can replace that. But it doesn't stop us from coming to you and giving you the gospel. Whatever it takes. The Bible says, an effectual door, a, a, a door has been opened to me, an effectual door opened to me, but they are also opposition to that door. See, let's not allow finances to become one of the opposition. Let's knock that thing out of the way and build something wonderful. And for some of you, somebody told us, yes, I think yesterday, they want to be partners with us. If you want to be partners with us, you can contact Pastor Lizzie Ebenebe. She's right in there. Click on that. You can link up with her. And then you can talk about Team 1000. And let's get going because this is the season that we're seizing opportunities to do something incredible for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. They, they are open doors. They're open doors to you. Are you with me? Hallelujah. So now let's take some Q&A. I hope you're ready to get some of those things in place. Hallelujah. Are you ready for something good? Are you ready for something good? Okay, let's get started because God is going to do something incredible in your world. Are you ready? Okay, I want to get some Q&A now. Are we, are we ready? You can put some of the questions there. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. Are you ready? If a person cannot speak in tongues, let's put that up there. If a person cannot speak in tongues, does that block blessings? Okay, now let's make sure we get this straight, okay? It says, if a person cannot speak in tongues, does that block a blessing? Now, it's a principle to be blessed. The Bible says, give shall be given unto you. That's how it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's called the law of reciprocity. When you do something, it's reciprocated. That concerning blessing, there are principles involved. But there is something about praying in an unknown tongue. The Bible says when you pray in an unknown tongue, you are speaking mysteries to God. It's a hotline to heaven. You can be missing some things that you would have gotten as a direct deposit from heaven. The Bible says building yourself on your most holy faith, you pray in the Holy Ghost. You see, there's something about building yourself. It's like getting yourself recharged like, uh, like the electric cars. You see, when you're praying in a known tongue, you're speaking mysteries unto God, but also you are edifying yourself. You are building up yourself. So you might say you might be losing, losing out on that building up of yourself. But there are many ways you can build yourself, but praying in tongues is one of the easiest way to get into the dimension of the spirit and begin to see things. So if you don't know how to pray in tongues, the Holy Ghost will give that to you. He will give that to you today. He will give that to you today. If you can believe that, you just say amen to that and receive it now in Jesus' name. It will come out of you. The Bible says out of your bellies, rivers will come. A man is satisfied by the fruit of his lips. That means as you're speaking in a known tongue, Satan has no understanding what you're saying. It's a mystery. God can decode that mystery. It's a, it, that is your language God has given you. If God says it's available to you, you might as well enjoy it. Okay? I hope that helps you. Okay, let's go to another question. 
It says, um, Godfrey says, how often should I engage in prayer and fasting? Well, you pray always. Now, the question is, do you understand what prayer is? Do you understand what prayer is? You see, prayer is a two-way communication. So, Somebody say to me, oh, should we pray all the time? Yes, you're supposed to pray all the time. But I don't look at prayer. I look at fellowship. I am called into fellowship with the Son. Fellowship is a higher dimension of operation than prayer. You see, you only pray to know. But when you fellowship, you are in the know. Does that, does that make sense? If you're around me, we have conversations. You're in the know. You don't pray to know what I'm saying. You're there with me. You are called into fellowship. The idea of fellowship is to become one with God, to become one with God and a part of God and a part of the discussion. It says in 1 John chapter 1, it says, indeed, when we have fellowship one with another, our fellowship is with him and with the son, Jesus Christ. In other words, when we are in fellowship, we get to know. You're built up in fellowship. So I would say, instead of praying all the time, get into fellowship. And prayer is never a problem. What about fasting? Well, when you start ministry, I suggest you fast to clear up all those things. But there are different kinds of fasting. You have to understand the reason why you fast. But you don't fast to change God. God never changes. Fasting is not trying to bribe God to give you something. No, God cannot be bribed. He is God. He desires to give it to you. Fasting is for you to clean the receiver to, re to receive from the, the, the transmitter. It's as simple as it is, fasting is for you. If you're being clotted with all kinds of noisy thing every day, you take a step back, cut off television, cut off certain things that always takes your attention, that's a fast. To cut those things and focus on hearing the voice of God. I hope this helps you. I'm trying to do this as quickly as possible so that we can take more questions. Let's move on. And then let's see this. Um, another question. Let's see, we'll take some questions again. Let's make sure I'm, I'm trying to read some of the questions that come on the screen. Okay, let's see this. Um, it says, well, Ramses says, what does it mean to put on Christ? What does it mean to put on Christ? First of all, who is Christ? And what is Christ? Christ is a person and it is a place. To put on Christ means you take on the, the persona and the responsibility and everything of that place called Christ. To put on is like putting on heaven. Putting on Christ simply means now you are taking the full office of Christ to manifest that. Christ in you can face the Father. You in Christ, that means you in Christ means Christ is around you. It, when they say put on, it's not like putting on a shirt. To put on Christ is like putting you in a sack and covering you until they see nothing of you but Christ. That's it. That is what it means to put on Christ. You come into a place they don't see you, but they see Christ, and you are manifesting Christ into your world. You are showing the attributes of Christ with your speech, with your actions. The way you regard people, that's what it means to put on Christ. It's not like, okay, I'm going to put on Christ like a shirt. No, when you put on Christ, you don't see your hands, you don't see your eyes, you don't see your head. It's like you're in a bag and it's like putting something in your bag. You don't see the thing, you see the bag. Christ is like the bag. So when you put on Christ, it means Christ now begins to become everything that the world sees when they look at you. I hope that help, helps you a little bit. I'm trying to do it as quickly as possible. I hope it's helping you. Let's take another question. <laughs> Rekha says she knows the secret of fasting, not eating. Okay, come on, Rekha. We're going to do a comedy night with you. <laughs> we miss you. That's our international director, by the way. He says, I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Can you fill me with the Holy Spirit? Now, see, the one that fills with the Holy Spirit, see, I can pray and the Holy Ghost will fall on you. If you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, right now, just receive the Holy Ghost. I just breathe in you, <sighs> receive the Holy Ghost wherever you are. And all you do is just receive it and receive him and he will begin to flow through you. It's that simple. Remember, he is the promise of the Father. It's for everyone that hungers for him. He, he wants you to be hungry for him. And when you receive it, just, 
the same way you got born again, by faith, receive the Holy Ghost, and then he will give you utterance. He will not, he will not speak for you. He will give you the utterance, but you have to speak. And then you begin to speak in tongues. I hope that helps you a little bit. Let's go to the next one. Hallelujah. It says, um, I see Michael Rezazad. God bless you, Michael. And I know Linda, my daughter, is watching too. Let's go to the next one. It says, the head and the body together, the totality of Christ. Okay, I think you guys are catching on to it. It says, how do you know the difference between your own thoughts, idea, and the voice and influence of God? It's very simple. Most people's thoughts is about themselves. If it is God's thoughts, it's how to bless others. See, whenever God is, is working through you, it, he thinks bigger than you would think for yourself. Most people's thoughts is more about self-preservation. I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to do this. So it's very selfish. But if it's God's thoughts, it's selfless. You become the instrument. You become the sacrifice that God does things through. I hope that helps you a little bit. Okay. How do we demonstrate? Okay, let's go to the next Alexander. Why did Saul ask a fortune teller and, uh, and she speaks words of God to Saul? Now, the Bible calls it a familiar spirit. A familiar spirit is not necessarily from God. It's a spirit that is familiar with a situation. So you have to understand. It's a familiar spirit, the witch at Endor. That, that's the story you're talking about. It's a familiar spirit. That spirit was there and can recognize the, the mannerism of the person. And see, when somebody has stopped trusting God and trusting the Holy Ghost, that's when he begins to ask. Why would you stop trusting God that wants to give you everything? You have access to him. I don't even think we should even go to the Old Testament to even talk about him because we have a higher claim to sonship and spirituality and whatever you want to call it than the people in the Old Testament. Saul, because he was rejected, he thought God would not listen to him. And what did he do? Immediately, he looked for an alternative. That happens to a lot of Christians. Sometimes, you know, they try some things and all of a sudden, looking for horoscopes and things. You don't do horoscopes. It's the same thing. Because it will tell you something that's familiar to what you used to. Now, somebody said to me, you don't listen to horoscopes? I said, no, I don't watch stars. Stars actually watch me. I am God's best. You are God's best. I don't wait for the stars. We command the stars. We speak our words. The heavens move on God's behalf. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Okay, let's move on from that. I hope I helped you with that. Uh, Michelle says, how do I demonstrate the resurrection power in that dimension you speak about? At this moment, I'm having challenges at the time in my body, spirit and finances, and I think I need the demonstration of resurrection power in my life. This is what you do. Everything has to do with revelation you have the power but the key is do you have the revelation on how to use the power i can give you a car that's why we're talking about the school of the supernatural the school of the spirit to understand the dimension of the spirit the bible says we don't know the ways of the spirit we know the ways of the flesh we know the ways of the senses but we cannot grasp the ways of the spirit we do not understand the dimension of the spirit if you don't understand it satan will take advantage of you so how do you demonstrate it sometimes most of what we're looking for like you talk about your body first thing you're going to do rebuke that thing believe it's done and begin to live when it comes to your finances guess what know the principles of the king kingdom of god be fruitful multiply replenish it says give and shall be given unto you those are principles of the kingdom of god what does it mean to be fruitful? It means create an idea. Be fruitful. The seed of creativity is in you already. Create a business concept, an idea. Be fruitful. Then multiply the idea. Then distribute the idea. And then you will do what? You distribute and then subdue. That means take over the market. It's simple principle. That's kingdom principle. As long as the earth remains seed. Time and harvest never ceases. Those are principles when it comes to finances. It says in Genesis 1.29, I've given you seed. This will meet your need. I've given you seeding seed. This will be for meat. It will meet your need. You have a seed, an idea. Launch it out. It will begin to bring a harvest back to you. The Bible says, cast your bread upon the waters. Soon it's going to come back to you. 
after many days. You send the ship out, it comes back with the harvest. In other words, send, send the ship, let the ship go through the risk of water, of the waves of the sea, it's gonna come back with a mighty harvest. I hope this is helping you guys. I am trying very, you can tell I'm trying to really rush this and pack as much as possible. Go back, listen to them, and they'll be a blessing to you. I hope this is helping you. Hallelujah. So let's go to the to the next thing. What is the trend of worship? The worship leader. You see, when God is, a, I, I like that, uh, Derek, it's a beautiful question. See, God does not do trend. You see, God releases a new sound. Whenever there's going to be a revival, whenever God is about to establish anything new on earth, he releases a new sound. Don't look for trend. Look for that sound. Look, listen, because if a trend is something that's already happening, see, it used to be a Hosanna music before we had Andrew Crouch and all those people. I had the opportunity of working with Andrew Crouch, great man of God, and then it changed. Then another sound comes. We had the Maranatha. We had Hosanna Maranatha, and from there, Kill Song came with one song that put them on the map. And the whole world began to sing, shout to the Lord. And then it shifted again. It went to Lakewood. Lakewood became big. And then it shifted again. It went to uh, an, another thing. And then another thing. They had the vineyard movement. When God is about to do something new, he always begins with the sound. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, there came a sound from heaven. As a worship leader, that's when fellowship with the Holy Spirit is important, to hear the sound from heaven. When that sound comes, those that are in the present sound will always oppose it. They will say, well, we are the ones that God is using this revival for. It's always the old wineskin that is concerned about the new wine and the new wineskin. So when there's a new sound that comes, the first thing that will happen is people are not used to it. But there's a move of God that comes to that sound. So God moved. And we had Lakewood Church, and you had Lake, Lakewood Sound and everything else. Then, all of a sudden, it hits um, Nigeria. You had, you had South Africa, and it became explosive. Then it hits Nigeria. Sinet comes to the sound, and the whole world is singing the songs. And you can see the movement of God in that place. But I can tell you, God is about to release another sound. There's a new season we're entering, and a new sound is going to come. It does not discard the old one. It simply says, God is building on that. In fact, they were asking um, Brian Houston of uh, Hillsong. He said, um, do you guys still sing Shout to the Lord? He said, no, we don't sing that anymore. We have moved on beyond that. Why? It's not that the song is, is not a good song. It's that God is moving by our spirit. Don't just repeat the same old songs. Hear what the spirit is saying. Hear what heaven is saying. And then capture it. A sound that comes from heaven. That is the key strategy for worship leaders. Be a, a worship leader that is in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Do you know sometimes you, you, you're sitting there, the Holy Ghost just drops a song. It's so simple. A new sound introduced to change the atmosphere of the world. And I hope that that's helped you a little bit. You know, I hope that helps you guys a little bit. I say, Abby, God bless you. I say, I haven't been sleeping really well. Can you please my sleep apostle, listen, you will sleep very well from tonight. It's done. Okay. Now, what else do we have? Let's let we have two more, two more, two more. Okay. When a prophet marries someone who was not a prophetess, how did it turn them into a prophet? You just marry a person. You don't marry a prophetess. You don't marry a prophet. You marry a person that happens to be a prophet. See, you always have to know the calling of people, the purpose with the call. Before you even get married, you got to know what they're called to do. So you don't try to turn people. See, you're born a prophet, you know what you're called to do, you do what God has called you to do. You're marrying the person, you're not marrying the gift. The gift comes from God for people. You don't marry the gift, you marry the person. The gift is for everybody. The gift is not for you. The gift is for everybody. So you're marrying a person. So I hope you understand that. That's why the Bible says a man that finds a wife finds a good thing you have to be looking so you have to understand the purpose of the person uh what they're called to do are they going the same direction as you it's as simple as it is you don't marry because they're they're beautiful or not beautiful because they are smart or not smart you marry because of purpose you're called according to purpose i hope you understand that you understand why the cre creation of man from genesis 1 
to fulfill purpose, the creation of women to help fulfill purpose. If purpose is not a reason, then you're missing out on, on why you're called to do. Because when the, the goosebumps and all those things fade away, guess what's going to happen? You come back to reality, what you were born to do. I hope that helps you a little bit. Okay, let's move on to the last one. <laughs> this is rapid fire. How does a person navigate multiple open doors? Now, <laughs> that's a good one. Not to miss any opportunity. Now, not everything that looks like an opportunity is an opportunity. Some of them are traps and landmines. So you have to discern. The first thing is it, it, it is, is, you see, I've never seen guards guarding a dump. They guard a bank. It's their opposition to what you want to do. That's one way you can tell what is the enemy hiding behind that opposition. Why are they opposing you to do something? Then you can understand that what we call opportunity is also look like a risk. You see, a risk and opportunity are two opposite sides of the same coin. One person sees danger, the other person sees opportunity. So it depends on how you look at it. Now, so you want to find out which one seems like danger and has opportunity and the other one can be so easy but it's a trap it's a trap so the key to it is discerning whether what you're having is leading you towards purpose or is leading you towards a paycheck you've got to know which one is which i hope that helps all of you hallelujah my goodness as the apostle molba god bless you son i love you and uh, i hope this has helped you so i want to give you guys another opportunity to be able to uh, do something, we want to make sure we can raise that million dollars. It's important we get that done. And your investment, let me tell you, in the midst of this, this is your opportunity to sow a seed. Okay? Um, I'm looking at some of the statements here that people are giving us. I see Lena Sandstrom, God bless you. See, um, I see, so why? Do, says, why do you do, so what do you do when you want to honor some someone at the church but god wants you to release something but you are blocked because they don't accept you so they are blocking blessings from others it depends on what it is so they have a right to, to say yes as if it's an offer there's got to be an acceptance and nothing is done by force if somebody doesn't resist you receive your gift it's fine so when you say you want to be a blessing to them is it like you have a prophetic word? I don't know what it is. It's just a kind of a vague statement. Uh, Alicia, if you can give me more definition, uh, I would like to answer that for you. I love you. That's my daughter, Alicia. We can't wait to see you at the October meeting. You need to register. I said, how can you act on the principles without revelation? If you don't have understanding of the word, how can you receive? How can you receive when you act? No, it's easy. Just that's where you spend time with the Holy Ghost, okay? Uh, Lucienne, so this is what you do. You have a word from God, then you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, and he will give you understanding. Sometimes you can just look for teaching on that subject, and you can learn understanding unwraps the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Understanding unwraps the treasure of wisdom and knowledge. So when you have understanding, the Bible says, may the Lord give you understanding. So the, the, the eyes of your understanding is being opened by the Holy Spirit. We got to do a whole bunch of teaching. Uh, all the questions you guys were asking, they are very good questions, but we don't have enough time. I'm trying to squeeze in as much as I can. I know I, you know what I'm talking about. So, but I hope that it's helped all of you. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> and I say, uh, Maryam, God bless you. All my, my PA people from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Love you. I want to pray for all of you. Thank you for all of your support. You guys have been amazing. Yes, um, Alicia says it was a word. Now, if so, if you have a word for somebody and they don't want to receive it from you, it's fine. See, when I have a word for somebody, they don't want to receive it. I don't worry about it. You don't force the word. That's part of maturity too. See, they have to see what God is doing in your life for them to receive your word. Jesus, his word was rejected by people too. Jesus said, my word found no place in them. So you don't get mad. You just say, okay, fine. So if they don't want to receive your word, it's fine. Just say, I have a word for you. For you, It's okay. I can give it. If they say, no, it's okay. You just walk away. You don't, you don't sweat it. Okay? I hope that helps you. And um, I want to say I love all of you folks. You guys are wonderful. You are my treasure. You're my joy. You are everything that I've always wanted to have.
wonderful people that can make us smile all the time. It's going to be a great weekend. Get yourself ready. We, those of you in New England and around the world, we have the embassy on Sunday, 1030 Eastern Standard Time. We are going to have our Holy Ghost time. We have all the, all the worshipers in the house. We have the dancers. We have everything. You need to be part of that worship service at the embassy. You come to 20 Polk Street in Johnson, Rhode Island. You know, social distancing by the Spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> Uh, hello, Daniel. Love you. I miss you. <laughs> I see Alexander and all of you. I love all of you. I want to say uh, from me and the rest of the team to you, have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you guys again. God bless you. We'll see you soon.
Thank you.